Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Endless Legend, uh, where we are doing uh, pretty well, pretty well. Oh, I do want to uh, say before we get going here, just apologize in advance, my uh, I esophageal issues have been acting up a lot today, so I'm going to try not to clear my throat into the microphone a whole lot, but I apologize if I do exactly that thing I just said I'm going to try not to do. So, we got to figure out a plan from here to the end of the game. It's, it's a good time to start thinking about strategy. I would still like this to turn into a diplomatic victory, in large part because I think that the series could use a diplomatic victory. We should see each condition go off at least once. So let's actually talk about how this works. To achieve a diplomatic victory, you have to earn 2,500 diplomatic points. You get diplomatic points in two ways. Number one is you get some diplomatic points every turn uh, from your relationships with other players. Every other player you know gives you diplomatic points every turn. Right now, we are receiving two diplomatic points per turn uh, from Cold Wars and two diplomatic points per, per turn from Peace. The deal is, if you are a Cold War or, I believe, uh, normal, like actual war even, you still get a point. Uh, if you're a Cold War with somebody, you get a point, uh, diplomatic point per turn from them. So we're at Cold War with two people, that's those two points. If you're at Peace with another player, you get two diplomatic points a turn from them. If you're allied with another player, you get more. I can't remember if it's three or four, but it's it's more. Uh, but if you just did the math real quick in your head there, you may notice that relationships with players are unlikely to provide you with even half of the diplomatic point value that you need to actually win the game. So the other place that the diplomatic points come from is making deals with other players. Anytime you... Let's uh, load in here. Anytime you make a deal with another player that requires the that has the bar in it, uh, you will earn some diplomatic points. There's two kinds of, of things you can do with another player. You can make a deal or you can make a declaration. You can see it says declaration on the bar when you're doing that. Declarations are not worth diplomatic points. But if you make a deal, you'll get a um, you'll get one diplomatic point for every five influence you spent on the deal, provided that the deal is accepted and successful. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's the right ratio. I, I might have the number wrong there, but that's the idea. You get some diplomatic points. You get one diplomatic point per X influence spent on the deal. So you have to generate a huge amount of influence so that you can spend a huge amount of influence making deals in order to actually win a diplomatic victory. Now, unfortunately, I do think the diplomatic victory is the sort of the worst thought out of the victory conditions um, in that the the real the best way to win a diplomatic victory is to make a lot of silly little ridiculous deals with the other players. Like, for example, we could make a deal with this guy where we're like, hey, let's have a research agreement and in exchange, I'll give you advanced armor and shipyard and maybe, you know, in exchange for that, you, you could give me a little bit of dust, and you can make deals like this. Deals that are are real and have meaning to both players. Um, but you won't be able to make enough influence, or you won't be able to spend enough influence to make enough diplomatic points to win the game off of just deals like this. So you're going to end up, we can reset this, uh, you're going to end up doing stuff like this a lot. So you may notice uh, 1 dust or 128 dust, it's 16 influence either way. And you get the same amount of diplomatic points per influence, right? There's no, like, scaling on the rate of diplomatic point gain based on importance of terms or anything. So a lot of what a diplomatic victory really is in practice is accumulating enough influence to make the conversion happen and then giving one dust to somebody 300 times until it pops over. But I do think that we should have one in the series if we can, uh, if we can put one together. And playing as the Morgaur or playing as the Draken is definitely the uh, those are definitely the two times when I think it makes the most sense to go for it, and I think we have a good position for it here. Uh, this does mean that we're going to have to continue. We're, we're going to have to play a normal game, right? We're going to have to get tech and get armies, defend ourselves and stuff, um, in order to get to the point where we can earn enough influence. Uh, and obviously, we can reduce the amount of influence we need overall by making sure that we have good relations with the other players as much as possible, which is part of the reason I'm so eager to meet Blue. I'd like to meet Blue, get peace in place before we have border tension, because as soon as your borders are rubbing up against another player, you have the chance to uh, start getting negative diplomatic modifiers from that, from, uh, uh, 
I don't remember what all the terminology they use is, but there's definitely one uh, living space tension where they would like provinces, but you settled in those provinces and things like that. So it's best, uh, it's easiest to make friends with, with people who are not your neighbors, in my experience. Anyway, what else do we have going on? So we are sending this mastermind across in the hopes of meeting Blue. I think my plan was to run through here and then we got interrupted. Is there a cliff? There is a cliff all the way around there. All right, well, we could just run north into the lake and then through the river and go that way. That might be a little safer. I'm going to do that. That's a pearl, but it's only one pearl. We'll be fine without it. Okay, and as for the rest of everything that's going on, obviously I'd love to get some more naval units out here and do some more stuff on the ocean, but the docks are highest possible priority. We cannot not take the docks. I will say I'm not super excited about the fact that I have six population in my empire on turn 29. That could be higher. And it certainly would be easier to get it higher if it wasn't winter out here. However, speaking of it being winter out here, it's winter out here in real life, and I am... Oh, I miss winter so much. I could never live in a place where it didn't snow. I'd go crazy. It has, it has started to, like, really snow. There's, like, actually snow on the ground on the trees and stuff, and I just went for a little walk in it, and it makes me feel so much less bad. Not better, necessarily, but I have a tendency to get kind of uh, spirally, uh, depression-y a little bit. And winter just, like, makes me feel better. Snow, in particular, just makes me feel better in a way that I can't really even put into words. Alright, so we're headed around through Daramard. What was I doing with you? Ah, yes, that's right. We were headed toward these fortresses because we need at least one of them for our faction quest. Hopefully we will get lucky on that. So Red is executing some maneuvers here. This is very impressive. You know what this is? This is a show of force. They want our Vor to see this and know. Well, I get it. I see what you're saying. Our Vor, by the way, is all the way healed up. The, uh, the healing rate bonus of fortresses is considerable. Let's have him head out over here and see what the story is. And unfortunately, I was hoping to rely on dust a little bit to help us rush the cargo docks out. It's not going to happen that way. Because we are, we're going to be lucky to not go negative. Uh, a lot of it has, a lot of it has to do with how long the winter is. Obviously, uh, at minus thirty-four dust per turn, we can maintain the current rate of loss for only a little while. I should probably move you over onto. Oh no, we need, we need food. We need this person on food to even stay positive on food here. All right, I think basically what we're doing is hoping for a short winter. That's really all there is to that. It does seem like we're not really under threat from any of the other players, though, which is nice, because we're not in a position to defend ourselves. The early game with the Morgar can be difficult in that way. Now, it is worth noting, I haven't used Cat's Paw at all, but that's probably not going to remain true for too much longer. Oh, oh we almost met the blue player there. <clears throat> we could see him, but he couldn't see us because of the cliff. He doesn't have true sight. Green just got the have 30 units at the same time achievement, which is interesting. That's something we need to keep an eye on. Uh, if Green was to go to war with somebody, I expect it would be red. So it's important to know the other players as quickly as we can so we can keep an eye on stuff like that. I don't know how we're going to meet purple. Well, one problem at a time, right? So you can veer off course to grab three pearls. I'm fine with that. It's not even really veering off course. We're just headed this way. Uh, and actually, this is a good place to go because I'm curious about what the story is with this landmass. Is this an island, like, off the coast? Or is this maybe a weird peninsula? Like, maybe this is in a bay? Okay, but if it's a, if it's in a bay, it has to be this sea, uh, sea region. So it would have to be the peninsula... It would have to be, like, the landmass is shaped like this. This could just be an island, and if it is an island, I'd like to know that. So we haven't used Cat's Paw, like I said. Uh, Cat's Paw costs influence, so to a certain extent, using Cat's Paw is cannibalizing our victory resource. Um, this is not like the Dust Victory or the Science Victory, where getting the resource is what counts for, uh, counts for the victory, so you can get it and then use it on stuff. 
we have to just we have to just have a ton of influence in order to win this victory type unless you know i'm realizing now i didn't check to see if there's anything different about diplomatic victories in the community patch well i suspect it won't affect any of our decision making this early in the game anyway so we'll just go through this episode and then i'll go look it up uh, the where i was going with that is i don't know that i i'm not concerned about spending influence at this point in the game it's okay to spend some influence uh we'll We'll get there. By the time by the time we're actually thinking about, hey, maybe we should convert some of this into diplomatic points, we're going to be at hundreds and hundreds of influence per turn. So the stuff we spend this early on, especially if it allows us to, like, expand and grab extra sea regions, is pretty immaterial. <clears throat> so if we see some neutral vessels out on the sea, it probably will be worth it to grab them. We've got the research for the... <clears throat> excuse me. For the Empire Mint... I think we gotta go back and grab sewer systems. Happiness is a big deal, and we are pushing it with ours. And now that we have the design for the Empire Mint, I think that's what we gotta get on. Yeah, we won't starve. I need I need Empire Mints. I think we probably have to build the Empire Mint everywhere, like, ahead of the cargo docks. Okay, it'll be done here pretty quickly. I do not think it's a good idea to not get the mill foundry. So we may have to pull some people off of industry and onto dust in order to not go broke. And in fact, we might have to do that this turn. Because we don't really have... Let's see. My concern here is that we have so few people to put on dust that we may not be able to uh, negate our losses. <clears throat> Well, we're going to push on. If, if we can't get this number positive, then letting it run really, really low and then moving people over to dust isn't actually going to help, is my concern. But we can move some people over now, and then Amonvar can finish this, and we can move everybody in Amonvar over to dust, and that'll, that'll cover a lot of it. Oh, hey. Totally forgot about intellectual jealousy, but that's one of the nice things about those kinds of quests, is that you can totally forget about them. It looks to me like this is coast all the way down. We're going to have to go up the coast a little bit here. So yeah, this might be a big weird bay. right? Though It could still connect via land bridge here. But this also might just be a large, narrow island. Like uh, what California looked like on maps that were made in the early 1800s. Now that I've said that, of course, I have no confidence that that is the correct time period. But if you've ever seen an old map, you might know what I'm talking about. There was a period where California was thought to be an island. It's a strange thing. Alright, you guys are going to have to, unfortunately, focus on dust for a second here. Make sure we don't go bankrupt. Now remember, we won't get attacked by red in neutral waters anymore because uh, it's no longer possible for red to attack us in neutral waters because of the peace. You know, it might be worth it to just go through here real quick, flip around, and see who's willing to do peace. I'm a little nervous about um, about making friends before understanding the diplomatic relationships of the world, because you can never tell who's going to take offense about you getting in bed with who. It is worth noting that we can offer to declare a black spot on people, <clears throat> and that'll buy us some approval from others. So, like, we could actually... Man, I wish he would give me Alchemist Furnace for that. We could maybe get something going here. Oh, Cultivation would be a great grab. We won't be able to do this for a couple of turns. What, what am I looking at in terms of needing influence for my Empire plan? So I did this because I was thinking, you know, sea units and settlers. We could probably pull that back. So we could just go with 80, in which case I would need four turns of my current influence growth. Which would allow us to make that Kapaku deal. Hmm. We do also have to keep expanding. Like, Leold, at the very least, has to be mine. We might want to actually settle Aldodev as our next one, though. Because if we take Aldodev, the odds of Blue taking Leold are basically zero. If we don't make peace with Blue first, Aldodev will be very vulnerable, though. That's a lot of words uh, for me to say. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do yet. 
hold on. What I'm hoping is to see a, uh, a couple of fire ships or something just outside of this fortress that we could cat's paw. And if we do that, then we probably don't have the influence left to be making lots of deals. Those guys could jump out of that fortress at any moment. It's not like the two units that are left over in a, uh, it's not like the two militia in a garrison where they are, they have to sit in the city. So we should be a little cautious up there. Alright, I guess we're going to talk to these guys first. Although, not this turn. Still see a lot of closed facilities. Okay, we can see this is an Adamantian. That's a Palladian. Oh, this is an Adamantian too. So it's worth noting that facilities just pay out. They don't require you to have the relevant tech to, like, build an extractor. So we are we have adamantian income now from our fortress. And our other facility has also opened up. It's a naval architecture facility. Plus 10% naval unit production cost. But minus one naval unit production cost per fortress. Wait, that can't be it's it gives me a penalty to my production costs? Oh no, sorry, it's plus ten cost reduction. Plus another I can't read. Man. So our, our naval units are cheaper. This is honestly not one of the better uh, facilities, in my opinion. But it is free stuff, you know? Sort of free. It's kind of free stuff. It's free-ish stuff. Man, I really don't want to pull people off of building this cargo dock. We're, we're going to keep this going as long as we can. So yeah, a reduction in uh, naval costs for... Each fortress we have, in addition to a flat 10% reduction. I do think I, st I do st still think it's strange that cost reductions in this game are worded as plus reduction in cost rather than minus cost. All right, if we're going to meet Blue, we have to get in vision of that city. <clears throat> Probably. This, I guess, will be the fastest way to do that. Let's grab this. Oh, they appear to have some kind of quest going on. Oh, it's probably the uh, the Tedke versus Herna quest. Alright, will these guys talk to me? The tribe in this region does not want to negotiate. Well, we may have to take these fortresses by force. Which is to say, we may need to, um, unfortunately, build more naval units before we can do this. Uh, the alternative, of course, is to hire a hero. Or to steal some naval units from the region, which is, I think, the current plan. Okay, the end of winter is extremely welcome. Give me your brain. Okay, so, we paid some influence for that. I know I didn't actually let us see the cost. I was a little worried about it not working out. Let's go over here. <clears throat> Let's go over here and do the thing. So we are paying an upkeep cost on this army. This is why I want to start a fight. And we will either get this fortress or we will lose our navy. And both of those are successful outcomes in my opinion. So we should probably start far enough back that they don't both get to attack. Oh, but I'm going first. Yeah, alright. Let's just have at them, I suppose. Oh, did you have to come in on the further away... Space. Well, that's a shame. The Vor's not going to get to participate in combat this turn. Uh, but we should probably do this thing, right? Just have at that guy as much as possible. It'll be better if our ships survive. If you do that and you do that so that we can make room for the advance of the Vor, but unfortunately... He's not actually going to get there this turn. Okay, that was a pretty good outcome. Alright, and now we have uh, Palladian income. We also have captured this fortress and thus uh, made the fortress in Italy. Wait, what did I... The Aristists are happy that their ugly occupiers have gone. Did I gain control of something? Maybe. 
Sounds like that was a quest for a minor faction somewhere. Uh, we also, if we return to the Manufactorium of Angrin, we'll get control of that. Obviously, we won't be able to hold it at the moment, though, so I'm not in a big hurry. You guys... Okay, there is only one enemy here. There is a fire ship over there that I would love to not have to fight. We spawned him as part of a quest. Unfortunately, we're probably not going to be able to avoid battle with him. Blue has met us, which is totally fine. I don't have an altar, so we can't see what the next winter effect will be. We definitely, definitely want to keep the die bo uh, booster rolling. Now I need to find a roll for you. Well, it looks like there's an unsearched ruin up there. This ruin's part of a quest, but this ruin is just searchable. Okay, so this is why we met Blue. They settled right up on us. If we're going to spend influence getting friendly with anybody, it should be Blue at this moment. So, let's try it. Would they go for peace? They will absolutely go for peace. How much do we want to spend on this is the question. Because we could give them probably... Oh, they would do this for a tiny, tiny amount of titanium. Actually, would they do it for glass steel? Because I would rather trade glass steel. They need the titanium more. This might be a good opportunity to um, go over the top a little bit and get some positive relationship value out of it. It's going to be a big move to actually get any tech from them. They don't seem particularly eager to give us... Well, we can get cultivation. We do like... Almost all of our titanium. And honestly, four titanium is not worth anything. Although, that much approval, or that much positive relationship also is probably not worth anything. But, like, this is a pretty good deal, and it probably keeps me safe. Yeah, I like this. And we want cultivation, because we want to we wanna get on building uh, food buildings quickly. Obviously, the docks are tremendously important as well. And the earlier we get the industry from the docks, the more powerful it will be. Especially in this city where, like, we already have four ocean exploitation tiles. So we need to get to... Uh, we need to get to a place where we have... Oh wait, there's lightning there. Well, we already moved on to it and I think we're immune to bad weather. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a way to view the capacities of the unit, because I can't, if I mouse off of it, the thing disappears. Ordinarily, you could solve that by just going into your unit design, but we don't actually have a, bathos a bathosphere unit design. Alright, so they're down for that, and hey, look at that, we're earning diplomatic points. The deal was worth diplomatic points, and then the piece is also going to be worth some. So Red can't attack our empty fortresses, we don't have to worry about that, unless... He cold wars us, which he could. And he could very well cold war us and then attack in the same turn. That that may happen. For right now, though, I think we're we're cool. Alright, so I think the next thing we want to go for maybe is Central Market. We have a lot of approval problems to fix, and also this is worth both food and dust, provided we can get our approval problems fixed. Yeah, we're building lots of important stuff. Just Definitely put the food in front of that. We can afford to move some of these guys off of dust. It's probably more important that we like push to get things finished. Right, because as Daramard grows, it'll make us more effective at buying stuff out. and We're working on it. It's just going to be a minute as we set up here. The fast expand is partially responsible for this because of our low approval value, but I think we made... We made a bunch of right moves. It's just been... It's a scary time. Okay, so here's a question. Do we attack the fortress right away? Do we have these guys rush over and try to attack the quest army, maybe? We could release the mind control if we didn't want to pay for them anymore. Obviously, I need them for the moment as a tool. Uh, and as it's looking right now, we're probably going to be in the neighborhood of 180-ish... Uh, influence available so we could try to push for that that's a big deal right like this empire plan i have five turns it's 240 
we'd have to be making um we'd have to be making like 30 something a turn we'd have to move a fair number of people over losing a little bit of industry for a little while to make that happen is probably probably okay and here in the capital is the place where it makes the most sense right So 31 five times would get us there. No, 31 five times would not get us there. We do need the second person. Yeah, okay. So we need to not spend influence on other stuff until after the next Empire plan. Ideally. I'm gonna see if this guy attacks us. If he attacks us, we'll use both of our units to fight back. I'll, I'll just accept that we're not getting the fortress this turn. We'll move one of the armies in this direction and we'll have the other one wait here to take the fortress next turn, turn after. Okay, so it looks like we're fighting. Do not ravage Mother Auriga. She's, they're mad about the pearls. These guys have given us a warning, which is a bad sign. The reason you do this is to decrease the cost of going back to Cold War. Or, I guess, of closing borders. In either case, things I don't want to happen. And the loss of the Emerald Boost has dropped us to unhappy. That's pretty grim. The good news is, Ozek the Chosen leveled up. One of our more valuable levelers. So where are we at on his cargo dock? Three turns. That's going to be a pretty good one, too. Alright, let's fight this battle. So... The bad news is, fire ships are pretty scary. The good news is, if I position this guy right here, we might be able to bait that cargo ship into ending his turn in the lightning. The other good news is, we can use our, um, we can use our stolen boarding parties, or boarding vessels, to tank the damage. We don't ever have to let the Vor get hit. So I'm gonna have the Vor move to here. The boarding vessels plan to move just closer, in general. And we're going to... Actually, if I have the boarding vessels move like this... I'm just trying to bait this guy under the lightning. If he moves straight up, he'll end here or here, and he won't get hit by lightning. And you can move through a lightning space without taking damage. There we go, that's what I wanted. Okay, so now we want to pin him in that space. Uh, you go first, so you go to here and hit him. The way the endless flames work is it deals damage in an arc... So we want to make sure our units are are not in the uh, in the same arc around him when we do the attack. I think it works on both attack and counter attack. Come on, kill him! Yeah, all right. And that means that our other unit doesn't burn to death. Hooray! And we finished a quest. We got fifteen titanium, which is fine. Kind of wish I had done that before making the deal. I mean, we could just go ahead and take this. For some reason, I was thinking that defending spends your action point. This is what happens when I take the weekend off. I mean, take the weekend off is, is a strong description of what happened. I have still been playing games. Uh, a lot of stuff came out. If you are watching this, you are probably aware of how many videos have been published over the last couple of days. So if we can bait this guy into one of these two spaces, we can get another lightning strike off, which would be pretty great. I'm going to have our boarding vessels just kind of move over here. Awesome. Okay. So I don't really want you... I kind of want to let the Vor take the damage here. I don't want this guy to attack for sure. I could have moved these guys more intelligently. Alright, let's try to seal up the rest of this region, because I really, really want to have control of the ocean. What is the quest that we had from them? Give them eight wine. Dude, I wish I had eight wine. We can try to trade some wine off somebody. Let's see if anybody has any. Because being able to just hand them the eight wine would be really cool. 
You do not have wine. You do not have wine and... Oh, you totally have wine, but not enough. Six wine. Well, maybe he'll have eight wine next turn. We could get lucky. And apparently, I am now really hemorrhaging dust, so let's fix that. Really want to get this stuff done, but... Unfortunately, that city really is the place where people can be afford to be moved over. I gotta be working on other stuff in all of our other places. How much does it hurt to move the last of these guys over to uh, Influence? Only two turns? If we're thinking about making a deal, I gotta produce some additional influence. Oof. Alright, well... Yeah, not a lot I can do about it right now. We are in a rough position. Maybe we'll get lucky and this ruin will be packed with dust. We also do see a boarding vessel army over here. It would be 52 influence to Cat's Pot. Okay, we definitely don't want to grab that army. This army is pretty torn up. As it stands right now, we're looking at four more turns of 52 per turn. So we have, depending on the cost of a potential deal, we have the resources to Cat's Paw a little bit, and we could use those resources to help us secure this, the next step of our faction quest. But also, I'm a little concerned that I maybe am over committing our influence. So I guess for right now, we will not do that spend. Let's just push forward here in hope. Man, if we could secure another sea region or two, I'd feel really, really good about our position. Also, I'm really hoping that one of these two ruins is going to have a bunch of dust in it. I mean, a sea region, a sea ruin, can potentially have quite a bit. Hey, that was 12 adamantian. I mean, it's trade fodder. And that is a quest. Be at war against another empire in 10 turns. Probably not a good idea for me to go for that. Well, we can go after this sea ruin next turn. There is, in fact, a third fortress in this region. Good to know. All right, let's talk to uh, let's talk to Pink. He has nine wine now. Oh, hold on, let's reset this whole deal. I don't want to do any of that stuff. Oh, right, we'll have to declare war, uh, peace. We'll have to make an actual deal here to get this. So, if that's the story, forty-eight. He would really love this adamantium. We're pulling it in for free, and we don't currently have a use for it. That's a 72 cost deal, but honestly, I think it's well worth it. And we'll give these guys the wine. And when we do that, we will receive a reward, and also I can give my units a little bit of time to heal. They're going to give me 10 blood crystal, which will not quite be enough to pop a blood crystal booster, but we can use the blood crystals to trade. Yeah, let's just get this done. Okay, so another sea region under my control. So we still have a fortress, or we still have a facility unrevealed here, and a facility... Nope, we have revealed all of our other owned facilities. <clears throat> this fortress, for some reason, doesn't have any. I'm assuming because it's spiteful. Now, we can't quite get to that, which is a real shame. You know, I should probably garrison these for the healing. We might need that. Unfortunately, we found no dust from ruins, so we're going to have to move some people somewhere over to dust for a little bit of time. We're still cool on our empire plan, right? We're going for 240. And as it stands now, we'll be at just about two. We'll be at 250 something, right? So it's probably going to be the guy in Garant. Oof, that's ugly. 
All right, well, once again, we're going to take a negative here in the hopes of pushing ourselves into an ocean ruin that will solve some of our problems on this coming turn. And then once Amonvar finishes its cargo docks, it can suddenly do a whole bunch of stuff. Cargo dock is going to increase our uh, dust output very, very slightly. We're so close to that being good. They would like to do a map exchange. Actually, I'm extremely down for that. Pink is really far away from me, and I want all that information. All right, it's looking more and more like this is actually an island. Yeah, I would I would love to do map and uh, map exchanges with everybody, but we simply don't have the influence. But any time that they're willing to foot the cost, I am I am ready. Oh, you guys can't dive ruins. Well, that's embarrassing. What are you even good for then? The Vor can dive ruins, and it's basically just a big angry seal with teeth. That was seals have teeth. You know what I meant? Bigger teeth. Wait, do seals have teeth? Yeah, they must, right? Okay, there we go. All of a sudden, we are fiscally solvent once more. This is an awful lot of blue dudes, but, crucially, no settler. I don't think we can really afford to push a settler at the moment, so I'm just kind of hoping they don't take Aldodev. Although, at this point, settling Leold to make sure that we will actually get it might be more crucial. I really, really, really don't want to delay any of these cargo docks, though. Uh, so now that we've done that, you can get back to this. That's probably a good idea for you. You guys can build, try to get some stuff done here. Uh, it would be really cool to get a dust dredger up here. These guys have to stay focused, though. That's, that is a thing we cannot change off of. And I'm going to assume that we're not going to be able to negotiate with the tribe in this region at this time. Yeah. Let's just keep looking around. There's another sea ruin we can search next turn. So the Manufactorium is this one. If we just talk to the people in the Manufactorium, we will get control of the Manufactorium. The Bastion in Angrin just wants 100 dust. We can do that. Oh, hey, Dust Eclipse. So we actually might be able to get control of most of this region without having to do a lot of combat. Yep, Red Cold War Dust, that was the point of their uh, warning. And Green is pillaging me, which is very annoying. I would love to fix my diplomatic situation with, uh, with Red, but obviously we cannot do that right at this moment. Do these guys want to negotiate? Because they're not part of the quest, so... Conquer Fortress is enough to gain five additional strategic resource facilities. Well, that's probably not happening. Uh, I did not search the ruins in Enolia. That's true. It's true, I didn't even try. I'm a little worried that Blue is going to take control of this fortress. Uh, what's going to happen to... Boy, our faction quest is going to get a lot harder to complete if... We lose both of those fortresses to Blue... So, actually, it might be a big priority for us to move both of these navies this way. We'll deal with this other stuff that's going on later. Now, these guys are very weak, so they can't engage by themselves. The fact that they're a lot faster than the Vor is not actually going to be very beneficial to us. And now he could, if he's willing to declare war, he could attack us here, but he can't attack us in our own region at Cold War still. Yeah, if he drops the, uh, if he drops a war declaration, a proper war declaration on us, it could be very bad. Still, yeah, nowhere near being able to actually buy those out. But we get our good empire plan. And then we have some time where we can devote our influence to other things. And we can get this guy back on land and hopefully get some uh, some good dust eclipse searches off. Oh, this makes us super fast on the water, doesn't it? 
It's actually pretty handy at the moment. So we're allowed to be over here. Let's go ahead and search this ruin. Blue has, in fact, grabbed that. Could be bad for me. Seventy dust is extremely welcome. Yeah, wow. This was a really good time for this, actually. That's a lightning space. It's all lightning over here. What is this huge lightning cloud? Okay, well, let's move to right here. That probably puts me in range to reinforce a battle at the fortress. Yeah, all this lightning sucks, though. Yep, just barely in range. Alright, we gotta take this. We don't necessarily have to be able to hold it, but I have to take it. So, my boarding vessels against their boarding vessels, but also we have the acid-spitting monster to back us up a little bit. So I kind of want to either stay put or maybe like even start way back here. What I'm thinking is we could start here, move these vessels to the back, and just like, I'm trying to draw them into the lightning clouds a little bit. They won't get into lightning this turn. But basically, I could I could employ some cowardice and refuse to fight them outside of the lightning. This might work. I think I'm actually going to have this guy go here. I'm going to force the Vore to spawn here, and then it's going to sit there. And we're going to make them come to us. Alright, we do not have to fight you. I should definitely not end my turn in the lightning, but we don't have to go toward them. I kind of think we just stay put. Like, I know I'm going to I'm gonna lose probably both of my boarding vessels here, which is a not entirely a terrible thing. What is the effect of minus 30% attack but plus defense against ranged, which does not have any effect? That's a shame. That doesn't really, uh, doesn't bode super well for me. But yeah, if you run forward, you're just going to get lightninged. Just be cool. Be cool, let them come to us. In your case, it doesn't really help. Okay, well. Oh, you... You asshole. I think this dumb plan is actually going to work. It's going to minimize the amount of damage we take. While maximizing the amount of damage they take, I get control of the fortress, and that moves us forward, and... Uh, not having to pay the upkeep for that cat's paw army is a big, big deal. We got good use out of that, though. We got 15 gold. Did I have gold already? No. Well, notice, though, we have moved back up to, uh, content. Morgoth has a city, many mines, food, shelter, but feels the gnawing of fear, the hatred that lies outside. The jailer's remnants are everywhere in the sea. And on the land. The jailer's dupes and tools like those in the fortresses that remain on the oceans. Morgar looks down, sees the darkness it came from, feels fear. Things lurk down there, remnants of prisons and hatred and memories of terror. But Morgar must face fear to be free of fear. Will dive, hunt, find answers. Might also find madness, but must face the terrors in its minds also to truly be free. So capture all the fortresses in Itleni and control that ocean for 10 turns. Itleni is this one? No, oh, wait, where's... Oh! Well, okay then. Cool. That was lucky. Now we gotta figure out what we want to do with this region. I would love to get control of it, obviously. Alright, so we have... A cargo dock finished. We're getting the sewer system up. Things are coming along. We're actually positive on dust now, which is just wonderful. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it. I believe Cat's Paw armies cost a ton of extra dust upkeep. Which is why we lost a single navy and went, and went up by that amount. Alright, we can't... Oh no, I just had not actually searched this ruin in the first place. 70 dust. Okay, then it's still glowing because 
sometimes they continue to glow. Yeah, all that extra C movement was, like, critical. So blue can't attack me here, remember. Blue might be able to take that one, but we will get to hold this. So whatever facility it holds that will be revealed at some point will actually probably contribute something to us, as long as we can keep blue friendly. The moment they go back to Cold War, they're going to rob us, though. And I kind of think... Like, we need to get we need to get this dock finished, but I kind of think maybe I want to keep these guys on influence for the moment, because we have a lot of things we can do with influence. And obviously, this is important, too. Do I want to just rush this, or, like, how far are we from a hero? Because a hero would be great. We're not really that far. If we can get another couple of ruin searches off, we might be able to get there. I can search that. Maybe next turn, depending on how this army moves. But not very many others. I really just need... I need more land units. Oh, also, we have to keep... Right, we have to keep the influence coming in because I gotta um, make friends with Red. Again. We gotta figure out this piece. We gotta keep Red on side or else they are going to attack me. And when they do so, they are going to kill me. We're gonna save Dust for a hero. We're gonna save Influence for Red. Which means we should hit the button. And we're going to see some building times go down a little bit here. God, step two of the science uh, quadrant is so powerful. Alright, please just move away and don't do anything hostile. Come on. There we go. Nothing. Well... I tried. Oh, there's a sea monster in Atleni! If you kill the sea monster, you get some significant rewards, but it is non-trivial. And the yellow bathosphere is being attacked. I do not think it is a good idea for us to engage in battle here. Just bounce. We can let blue deal with this nonsense. Uh, yeah, I don't need to be here at all. I'm getting out of this quadrant. Let's go hang out with our friend. Actually, I should probably go a little bit more to the south, because he's going to go south here. So, we did not interact with the Hernas fast enough. We did not get the quest done here, because Blue just took control of that. If we just talk to this fortress, it will immediately become mine. I think I'm going to do that. We may find that we have a hard time controlling it. Ah, we got enough gold to pop a gold booster, too, which I think, even though it's not going to push us over an approval threshold, it's going to make us a significant amount of money. Yeah, because we're now paying the upkeep costs on a lot of buildings. It's going to make that hero way more likely. And probably we just want to go ahead and push through the approval levels. You know, a Museum of Ariga is a pretty good way to push through some approval levels. This is not a terrible place for that. <laughs> if it's going to be only four turns, yeah, hell yeah, I'll do that. And then we can build, like, an altar and a burrow and just get our cargo dock leveled up quickly. I guess we need some more population before we can necessarily do that. Uh, no, we don't. We only have to build one real burrow in order to make that work. Yeah, wow. Uh, Amonvar is going to be very powerful. So, we have to pick up some new research. Market's good. We could grab Native District and get quite a lot of health on our units. We could get Aquacultural Science, which obviously promises to be a lot of food for us. I think we'd better. Given the priority that we're placing on settling on water. And at some point, probably it'll be worth it to go get Alchemist Furnace, but honestly, maybe... Maybe it's not a big deal. I suppose... Hold on. What about the industrial megapole? Eight turns. Because we could still just build the central market afterward. But if we built the megapole here, we'd be a lot safer from red suddenly flipping out on us. I don't know if I'm going to make it in time. Eight turns from now is 49. The megapole might not still be available. But if we do make it, 
We make the Mega Pole, then we do Altar Burrow, like I was saying. Or maybe even in the opposite order, I'm not sure what's right. We would be able to level up the Mega Pole eventually by building out here, if we wanted to. But that would make Amonvar so productive. I'm gonna go for it. We're gonna try to hold our hold our neighbors at bay through friendship for the moment. So it would be great if we were at peace. Which is probably going to require me to spend a little bit more influence with you. I don't really want to give him more tech. I don't mind giving him some uh, adamantium or palladium. Because again, we don't have a use for it yet. And I'm not really afraid of him having it if he's at peace with me. Frankly, I kind of would like him to have it so that he could fight Green off. Although I suppose he's a victory threat himself. Well, not a problem to be worried about this turn. So that's the sea monster. Unfortunately, I think it can attack our fortresses, which means we're going to lose control of our fortresses in a way that we can't really do anything about. If it turns out it can't attack fortresses, then we're fine, and we just need to never move uh, naval units into this area ever again. I guess we're about to find out. If it can attack, it will next turn. Maybe it can't. You know, I, I don't remember. Oh, uh, maybe it can't. It might also just be distracted by Red's Navy right now. Okay, so I think we're going to go ahead and go up to Ship Builder. We could grab... Hold on. Is, cult, is the approval from Cult of Tides going to push that city over a threshold? Yes. Although, actually, right now it should be happy. Because it's actually at 60%. This isn't a rounding error. So Sewer System is going to take care of that. You know what? Let's just go ahead and push upward. Naval unit uh, production, cost reduction is something, but also inspirational leader is big. Okay, you get to accompany us to the south a bit here. What was the quest for you? So apparently, it is possible... There, there are two versions of this quest. You don't necessarily get attacked, is what I am, what I am told. So do we have... We do have another Morgar hero available. We could pick this guy up next turn and, uh, and try it. Maybe get lucky. If we try it and we fail, though, we're going to lose our army. Because fire ships are terrifying. If we, if we try it and we don't get lucky... We're gonna lose our army because I think it's I think it's several fire ships. It's like three or four, if I remember correctly. We definitely don't just want to go past because if we just run past them, we're going to find ourselves in a uh, in a dangerous position if they spawn ships and those ships head north. I really would love to lock this uh, this naval area up entirely. It is worth noting, by the way, that once we have control of these fortresses. There are no fortresses left to spawn neutral naval units in this entire northern ocean. Um, it's possible that there's stuff down to the south. We got a weird, like, an actual band of land all the way around the center of the world. So it's possible that there are still uh, neutral fortresses, but they can't threaten us. This is the important thing. I cannot wait until it is no longer possible for neutral vessels to spawn. So maybe the plan should be that we just attack here? I'm going to merge these two up for the moment. I know that ruins the stealthiness of the bathysphere, but it also makes these guys a little bit better at uh, surviving a surprise attack. And you need to try to get to another ruin that's worth searching. How is there a ruin that I've just never searched up there? Well, let's go do that. God, look at how much look at how much our dust situation has turned around and how quickly. Okay, so we can just barely make it there this turn. We couldn't make it over here. Yeah, I think this is right rather than trying to go for uh Trying to go for the um, the temple 
Eclipse stuff. Because we actually will probably still be able to get this unless the Eclipse ends on the turn, the earliest turn it could. And now, this is the part probably where we have to start thinking about resettling. I should probably just cat's paw these guys. Alright, I can't merge up. So do we want to try the quest now that we have more ships? Or would I rather just attack here? Do you have your action point? You do. But I'd rather just attack here. And spend the money buying a... Because we could, we could buy a naval governor. We also could just attack here. Spend the money buying a... Uh, uh, a governor. Not a naval hero. Buying a governor hero instead of a naval hero over there. Because what on earth is a naval governor? What am I even saying? We are again being pillaged. They didn't finish pillaging it last time. I'm not, I guess, that worried that they'll finish it this time either. Even if that happens, it's not the end of the world. Here in Daromard, where we're doing this, uh, we should probably grab approval buildings. And then here in the capital is this time for a settler. First of all, before I forget again, let's put improved movement on the settler. Then, do we need to go grab Leold now? Probably. I kind of would like both of these, honestly. And if I'm going to get them both, I probably have to go for them both now. But if we got Leold and Blue took Aldodev, we could still maybe get this island? Blue has the potential to settle the island because we know he has ship tech because he's a lie. I think I'm going to build a settler. We might have to refocus on industry here. So first thing, let's get the piece from red. I kind of want a black spot green because I'm worried about green's military. Let's, uh, hold on. Is that a reasonable concern? Pink's military is actually the greatest danger. Pink will be mad at me if we, uh, if we declare a black spot on them, obviously. But they're not really a direct threat to me, and encouraging other people to pick off some of their military, especially with the number of neighbors they have, is maybe a good idea. So how would, how would Red feel about me offering a declaration of black spot? Oh, Right, it's going to have to be a player that uh, I know and they know. Wait, do they not know pink? No, of course they do. Oh, right, I pieced with pink already. I can't black spot them. We have, we have too much peace for me to black spot anybody but green. All right, let's talk about a different term then. How about a small amount of this adamantine? Right? That's a pretty good deal. Keeps me safe. Contributes to my diplomatic points. And uh, doesn't really cost me very much. Then we can move the people here. Over to industry. We're going to get this uh, extra point of population. And then immediately turn it out into a settler. We might be able to get this settler out even in four turns depending on i don't know how close we are to the threshold but that extra point of population might be enough and i think with that i've decided that we are buying a governor not a naval hero so who's it gonna be could be way Rasigo. he's pretty good he's a good industry man um search atenol is not really that impressive you're all is a cultist and the cultist tree is great but other than that not very impressive Gloria has influence boost too. I do like that. I think it's got to be Way Rasigo. Food boost two, industry boost three, with an industry boosting uh, faction tree. It's just too powerful. We gotta help get some of this stuff established. Look at that. He took two turns off those cargo docks just by showing up. What a hero. Okay. Our empire is uh, is actually starting to get pretty great, and I think it I think it behooves us to engage in a little bit of combat here. Who needs this quest? 
Let's just do violence. Uh, now we probably want to take it slow this first turn. I'm thinking just I, I don't want to get way out there because our other ships will not be able to participate in combat. So I'm going to go ahead and move my guys to just barely the edge of their ability to inflict violence. Uh, but if I do it this way, we still our other ships still won't actually be able to engage in combat. This guy, oh, this guy will end up probably here. And that will let the sub shoot him at least. Oh, so we can actually look at these now that we have him in combat. Okay. Cannot be submerged on coastal water tiles. But, uh, times five defense when submerged. Can pass through opponent units. Ignores the endless flame effect, but cannot counterattack. So subs are really good at fighting fire ships for that reason. My big concern is that I move to here, then this guy might move to here, then they get a fair fight, and I don't get to use my overwhelming uh, numbers advantage, so I'm just going to have everybody chill for a second here. Probably want you guys to move forward a little bit. Let's let them come to us and then apply our superior numbers to their faces. He did not unsubmerge, which is good, because I didn't actually figure out the math there. I didn't want him to attack, so. These are just boarding vessels. Give them... Give them a little bit of this, just team up on him. The Vor may end up fighting this guy by himself, potentially. I will see how movement works out. I wasn't expecting us to one-shot the other guy. Well, that was uh, really, really good. We did not take any damage, everybody. Okay, here's hoping that the Dust Eclipse does not... Oh, no, it can't end on this coming turn. So I don't want these two to get too far apart. Once we have these guys uh, moved over and all of their... Movement points spent and everything, we might, un like, after we take the fortress, it might be worth uncats pawing them. Or we gotta fight these boarding vessels, too. We got a lot of fighting to do. But basically, I don't want to have to pay for this, for this navy anymore, because it appears that we aren't going to need it after we finish taking Angrin. At some point, we're gonna have to fight that sea monster. At some point, we're gonna want to fight that sea monster, because the... The reward for fighting the sea monster is considerable, but we're not going to want crappy cat's pod uh, boarding parties, or boarding vessels at that time. We're going to need real ships to fight the sea monster. Let's try to take control of this fortress this turn, and then that might be a good spot to end the video. I would love to engage with these guys. We are not going to be the first to earn 2,000 influence. We actually, like, we're trying on this one. So we don't get negotiation tactics, which is a shame, because negotiation tactics is very good. Yeah, we're making some pretty good money now. How much of that money is coming in through our trade routes? Okay, only 22 of it. But we are also making 22 science, and actually that's like... That's a not inconsiderable portion of our total science. So we have this stuff coming along. Daromart is going to be... Hopefully... Um, fervent after this central market is built it's going to somewhat depend on how they decide to uh, manage the thresholds because we should be happy not content right now but uh yeah cities are going well in general green did finish burning this that's like whatever i do not feel terrible about it Also, Dev is maybe not that valuable. Maybe we get Leold and then start building another settler and head for the island. We'll, we'll like we'll just see if Aldo Dev is still available. Honestly, mostly my thinking is I want territory, but as far as territory goes, Aldo Dev's kind of bad. Although I suppose for us, all that really matters is it's near the water. Okay, let's have Adam. And once again, I would love to do this in such a way that my boats, my backup boats, can definitely be part of the fight. So let's back these guys off to like these positions. 
they'll come forward and fight us. We probably won't have to engage personally. And then our other ships will actually be able to also participate. Man, these boarding vessels are, like, really putting up. So you can see when he, uh, when he attacks, he unsubmerges, but then he resubmerges. I think it's, you're, you're submerged until you attack f during the turn. I don't, I don't know how submersibles work, man. This is going to be the game where we learn. This is going to be the game where I actually internalize some of this information. Alright, so unfortunately I did use my um, action point, making sure that the correct ships would lead the attack there. So we're just going to wait a second on this. I could just give him 100 dust. Do I just want to give him 100 dust? We don't really need to. I can use this 100 dust for stuff. We might get uh, rewards. Obviously the reward for this first step is not very good, but we might get other rewards. But also... I want my 100 dust, probably. Okay, so you're good, and I think we're good everywhere else, too. I don't think there's anything else, like, super obvious that I want to spend influence on. Yeah, I think we're just gonna pass the turn and take control of this, and then call the video there. So we want to have the boarding vessels here take as much damage as we can. Oh, that's a shame. I needed a little bit more Eclipse time to get that ruin. It, it actually did end on the very first turn it could have ended. Dies run out, and we don't have enough to run a die booster anymore. <laughs> We're very close, though. We might be able to trade some off of somebody. Okay, because so I'm pretty sure when you uncat spawn army, it still exists, and then we, you know, it'll be neutral again, and we'll have to fight it. So I'd like them to take as much damage as possible on this one, just to uh, just to be rid of the burden of having to pay their salaries. They're really not taking much damage, though. Yeah, you did it, Yellow Submersible. Okay, so that's control of another region. Look at this ocean. Look at how orange it is. It's almost orange enough. Okay, so I'm being... being pillaged even more, which I hate. So I think the way we want to do this is we want to uncats paw them next turn, because if I uncats paw them now, they can move. If I uncats paw them next turn, I can immediately attack them. We can see Pink's territory a little bit. It really... Um, there's a fair amount of it. It's getting kind of big. Red's getting kind of big too. Did red take... This this was pink. Right? Because there's a volcano former there. Are red and pink at war? Yes. Okay, that's... Maybe... Alright? I mean, I don't really want red to get more powerful. But pink had that crazy military, and I do like seeing that broken down a little. I wonder how this is going to end up. We're going to have to watch that carefully. Alright, what else do we want to do here? I guess we want to keep you... I kind of want to do this fight away from the fortress, if possible. Just thinking, I don't I don't want... The... Oh, you know what? I'm going to end my turn in this lightning. Do that. Then you end your turn right here, ready to chomp them. Oh, uh, actually... No, you cannot just sell a cat's pot army. That's a shame, because that's definitely the correct thing to do if you could do it. So our faction quest is just coming along. We got lucky, and it asked us to maintain control of a thing we already controlled. If it had gone for uh, Therat, that could have been awkward. We're making good progress over here. We're possibly going to get the Megapole and then also level up the cargo dock right afterward, which is, like, really cool. This cargo dock will actually be done at some point. We could probably buy it out next turn, actually. Well, will, will we have enough dust? But a fifth of this is going to come off, so it's going to be like 65. This is going to cost 200 and... Yeah, we're not quite going to have enough money to buy that out next turn. 
That's okay. We probably should save the dust and use it to make sure that we have a governor in each of our cities, including the new one, before we go uh, spending on other stuff. And as for you, man, I just have no idea what to do with you at this point. Uh, well, get thee toward the water, probably. Right? That's a lot of uh, extra maneuverability. We could come over here. It's possible that the army that's doing the pillaging is not very strong, and if that's the case, we can maybe try to initiate combat with them within range of the city. It's probably not going to work out. I guess we could head south, and there's not even any ruins to search. Yeah, I have no idea what to do with this guy right now. There's ruins to search in Blue's territory. Let's go that way. I'm sure Blue won't mind. We're the best of friends. So, I think that is probably the end of that turn, and as such, the end of the video. Um, we've slowed down our settling a little bit, and I, that may be too much. But also, I'm like a little worried about blowing our approval again, and it doesn't seem like Blue's in a big hurry to get out here. I guess the other thing we could use this guy for is actually going and collecting the rest of the pearls in our territory. Because I haven't been doing that. Yeah, we just need more ground units. Alright, something to consider for next time. But that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time for more uh, Domination of the Oceans. Come back next time for me sitting here and being in control of Atlanti for five more turns. And we'll see you then.